Hello, everybody. Happy Monday. What's going on? Hi, how are you? I'm good. How about yourself? Great, thanks. What's up, everybody? What's going on? How we doing? What's that, bro? What's up, Danny? Long time no see, man. Glad you're still alive. Yeah, bro. Of course. Hey, everyone. Happy Monday. What's happening? I, I, I got too much sauce. That's why it be dripping out. Eric, I got a quick question. It's Joe. Yeah. What's up, man? What's um, up? No, nah, not much. Uh, so we've been really focusing on our production costs, right? Because, you know, before we, we got involved in the program, we weren't even thinking about production costs, right? Yeah. So my question is, how do you think about your production cost per ASIN when you're making larger purchases, like of equipment? Like we want to buy a forklift, right? So let's say it's going to be $6,000. Hypothetically, I used one off of Facebook or something, right? Let's say for that month, we produce, just as an example, 3,000 ASINs. So theoretically, that would increase our production cost per ASIN by $2. So my first question is, do you factor in purchases like that into your monthly production costs? And two, if you do, does that affect the way that you source products? No. We do okay. not factor those in into our monthly production costs. We factor them in at the end of the year in our total costs. Okay. Because if you were to do that, if you were to buy something really, like let's say you get a forklift. A forklift is, you know, $25,000, you get a brand new forklift. You know, right. it's like that. That would that would mean your production per acid would be like 17 bucks, you know? So it's like, exactly. it's, it's not a good way to analyze it. So we would just include that in our total numbers when we're reviewing our profits and our expenses at the end of the year. Okay, so you're only you're only factoring in reoccurring essentially monthly expenses or per like per ASIN expenses, poly bags, stuff like that. Yeah. Software. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we're and we're yeah, we're taking averages too. So um you, you can get real granular with it, but I, I think it's for the you know additional five cents for a poly bag versus a non poly bag. We just put them all together and we say, hey, for us to get one product out the door, whether it's a one sticker item, a three pack, a bubble wrap, this is how much it costs us. That's how we've been doing it. Just figuring out a cost and applying it to all products or potential products before we order them. Yeah. Is All right, your number, thanks, man. Is your, is your number greater than $1.50? Our, our production cost per ASIN? Yeah. No, it's like 70 cents. Okay, that's phenomenal. Yeah, we're pretty, we run a pretty lean operation. Honestly, I think it's because, well, one, it's because we've been able to find really good help for cheap on Facebook, believe it or not. We posted a Facebook job ad and got like five people who are willing to like work for cash, at, you know, at pretty, like we're saving a lot of money for that right now. Yeah. So, you putting shipping on that number too? 70 say cents? it again? You putting shipping on that number too at 70 cents? Yeah, our shipping is pretty cheap because we're, we're in upstate New York by Utica uh -huh. and uh, all of our shipments get sent to TEB9, which is in New Jersey. So, yeah. so I talked to Unishippers shippers about it. It's, it's one day transit in the Northeast, so it's usually very cheap like we shipped out uh like we're probably at I don't, I don't even know what they charge us but we shipped out like eight pallets last week and it was like four hundred dollars yeah that's really good yeah we use central transport and unishippers our unishipper rep is on point and he was saying uh central transport is usually love hate but we've had no problem because it's just one day transit from yeah. from us to jersey yeah I'm in the same boat. Central Transport for uh, for New Jersey and New York, I think, is the most reliable and the least expensive carrier. Bro, T Force for the same shipment quoted us twelve hundred bucks yes. for eight pallets, yeah. and Central Transport quoted us four hundred. Yeah. So. Hey, I I got a question for you. How many orders are you producing a month? Wait, how many how many ASINs we're producing, or how many orders we're selling? No, no. How many ASINs are you producing in a month? This month we produced about five thousand. Okay, five thousand. I'm just running some numbers here. So 20 yep. cents is a thousand. I was just seeing. So what I like to do is something we started doing recently was like, uh, you know, we figure out our cost of production per ASIN, right? And then we say, okay, let's allocate 10 more cents in new employees to our operation. So we're going to say, all right, right now our cost of production is at 70 cents. 
let's bring it up to 80 cents. What numbers make sense where that additional 80 cents starts to make us more money than it's costing us to pay? So it's like, how many more orders do we need to produce to make that more valuable to us? Does that make sense when you start looking at it? I'm just trying to get your head thinking like from a growth perspective. Yeah, you, yeah, cost, like how our costs translate to, to profit. Yes, 100%. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. We've been thinking about that a lot. That's what we've been, in the past, we were kind of, I mean, for lack of a better word, stingy with our money. Now we're getting a lot more liberal with spending it because yeah. I, I, it seems like the more we spend, I know this is what everyone says, but the more we spend, the more we make. Yeah. Like it's just, you know, that's why we're trying to buy this forklift because there's no point in not having it, you know? And it's a great purchase to be made at the end of the year as well. Yeah. So thanks, man. Yeah, I love it. I love it. All right, listen, I'm gonna we're gonna do a little power session here. I'm gonna go through these last couple of questions and then out of respect for everybody's time, uh we're gonna rick it. Yeah, can I just ask a question to Joe? Yeah, yeah, Gustavo, what's up? Joe, uh your cost includes the your salary or not? Uh no. I we ha I haven't actually none of us have taken any money thus okay. far. Uh so it's me, my brother, and Frank. It's it's three of us that are kind of running the show here. John, my brother, and I still work our day jobs, and Frank owns a bunch of rental property, so he's self-employed. You know, we haven't taken any money out yet, but that's something that we want to implement in 2022 because, I mean, why, why not? I think it's good to, you know, it's good to start paying ourselves to form the habit of being self-employed, self-reliant, that kind of thing, so we could really make the switch, you know? No, because I mean, it's it's really good. It's a really good cost. But... Yeah, it doesn't I, include yeah, to no. my, but my my include my salary also, you know, so that's maybe that's why it's a little bit higher. Something yeah. else I should add because of the cost is our current warehouse that we're working out of Frank owns, so we're not paying rent. So that's okay. probably why it's so low. Yeah. Frank sense, owns yeah. Frank owns the warehouse and then the one we're moving to we also bought. So do you think we should not just a quick question, should we include like property taxes in yes. our since we own the building? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Makes 100%, sense. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Because that it just gives you a clearer number. Yeah. Definitely. Because it's outgoing. It's outgoing versus incoming. Yep. Gotcha. Thanks a lot. I got the message. We have recently restricted listings for the products listed below on Amazon. However, I sell several other products of the same company. I've received this message before and then the product was not restricted when I checked. Not sure why this would happen. So it does happen occasionally. You get a restricted ASIN email. You don't look at it for a day or two. By the time you get to it, you look at it and the ASIN's listed for sale and you're back in stock. So what Amazon's doing for these restricted ASINs is it's not based on brands. It's based on you Usually a restricted listing is based on ingredients. There's something in that product that Amazon deems, like for a while on Amazon, it was acetaminophen. So any product with acetaminophen in it was no longer allowed to be sold on Amazon. So you might see different, the same brand, but it might not have the same ingredient as the products that restricted. Does that make sense, Vanessa? Yeah, it does. And so, like, should I not be sending more stock to them? Because it's saying I've got 30, I don't have any more stock right now. But instead, it's saying I have 30 days to remove stock or they will remove it. Yeah. And yeah, then again, sure. it goes away. And I check to see if it's restricted to actually, like, list it again. And it doesn't act as it's, as it's restricted. It's just so confusing. That, that sounds like um, like the big thing that happened with toys, like in the last year, where they wanted the documentation. You needed the compliance documentation, but and it always says like that thirty days. It doesn't always run out at that thirty days, and even if it does, you'll always still be able to take the product back. Like it's not they're not okay. gonna like they're not gonna take it and, and get rid of it. Yeah, you might go to stranded, and then you might have to remove it unless you right. provide whatever documents they're looking for. So it's really okay. it really sounds like a risk versus reward thing, right, Chris? Yeah, I mean, if you're selling through it pretty good, I would I would leave it. And mo most of the time, the 30 days passes, and then you know you might get another thing. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's a, it's a risk versus reward. Yeah. All the right, one thing you. I did, uh, Vanessa, the one thing I did uh, before I left uh, last minute to go overseas is 
I had this um, Squishmallow issue where they wanted a CDC thing and I had a, a month to send in the paperwork and I knew I wasn't going to send in the paperwork. So I, li I listed it as FBM and I just gave it to my neighbor because I had to like leave to have a, go to a family emergency um, overseas mm -hmm. and they all sold out before the, before the one month was done. So just sell out your stuff and then, if, yeah, don't want to repeat what sense. everybody said, but just sell it and then if they keep yo-yoing just ride it and and if you want to liquidate it just liquidate it by a dollar or 10 cents or whatever you need to do to get rid of the product that's what i did i just liquidated it to get rid of it and i still got a great price yeah i'm already out of stock i was i was just wondering i'm like do i send more in like when it goes you know when you can do it again i don't know it's just kind of confusing is it like, i was just yeah. documentation i'm sorry is it asking you for anything? No, it's not asking for anything. That's the that's the strange part is it's not asking for anything. So what I was actually thinking of doing is just sending in the invoice, like invoices, you know, showing that I purchased it from the companies. Maybe that will appease them. But um, I reached out to Seller Central and but I just haven't gotten an answer yet. Yeah, I had a, a Fisher Price item that they did that with they like removed it and said that but they ended up telling me that i needed documentation which i got from my distributor and then everything was good but yeah i didn't yeah i was just so uh, hopefully they can tell me more when they eventually get back to me yeah thank you all right um for private label does a direct swipe up link from a big influencer on social media help with keyword ranking for your product absolutely it does i think what amazon loves the best is taking traffic from another social media site or another marketplace and driving it to amazon i think they have a ranking system based on how they optimize their seo and yeah. that's definitely at the top okay so I know before I was using uh, super URLs through Helium 10. So I wanted to see if it would be better to just have a direct swipe up link or actually to use the super URL to rank for that keyword. Well, I believe the super URL has additional tracking in it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it, it really, it's a personal preference. If you want the additional tracking, then you can use the super URL. If you just want to drive traffic to the listing and you don't really care, you know, um, what's happening with the clicks and the purchases, mm -hmm. then you could just use a red, the Amazon's generated link. All right, cool. Yeah. I would say you'd probably want to use the, especially if this is a brand that you're putting a lot of work into, I would say you'd want to use the Helium 10. Yeah, it's just an extra step for customers to purchase. That's why I'm like trying to stray away from it, you know? Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I'll try and both out and see what's up. Yeah, and then Melinda brought up a valid point that you definitely want to, you know, I, I know I've had companies reach out to me before and ask like, hey, can you do a swipe up link? And then if I believe in the company or whatever, I'll be like, yeah, whatever, $8,000. And then they will, uh, they'll ask for screenshots of my data, you know? So mm -hmm. like what my follower age is. So you should be requesting that as well. Yeah, yeah no, I got most of that uh, for the most part. So awesome. I think it should be good, but you know, we'll see. It's hit or miss, obviously. Yeah. Um, Kalima said, if I'm creating a two pack listing of that existing listing, could I use the same photos from the other ASIN single pack? What I would do is I would just jump in a Photoshop and just create two side by side for the main image and then use the images for the other listing. Just so it, it I think a two pack when it's both, when there's two in the image, it just looks a lot better. You can even go on Fiverr, it'll take 24 hours. You can pay someone 15 bucks and they'll do it for you. I, I have Adobe where I can go I can go do it. So it's, it would just be worthwhile to take like the main photo and just double it up. Yes, yeah, it just looks better. It looks more appealing to the customer. It's easier for them to understand. Great, great call. Another great call. Appreciate all of you. Yeah, absolutely. So if you got any questions, hit us in the Facebook group and uh, we'll see you all next week. Same time, same place. Hi, doll. All right. Have a good evening. Yeah. Good night. See you at the top. Good night, night. everyone. Hey, lit.